If you want to be a highly paid video editor in 2024, this is the video for you. Hi everyone, I'm Ishan Sharma. I've been working as a video editor and running my video editing agency for the last three years. And today I am going to spill the beans. I'm gonna talk about the exact step-by-step -step process that you can go through to learn everything about video editing from scratch and start getting clients in the next three months itself. It's going to be a very in-depth guide, so make sure that you take notes as much as possible and start acting on it from today itself. As always, it's either day one or one day. And if that sounds exciting, hit the like button and let's start with the video. The first most important thing to answer is why video editing? Like, why do you want to learn about video editing? Well, hear me out, video creation on the internet is on the rise like never before. Companies, creators are popping up on YouTube and other platforms every single day. They are finally realizing that the best way to engage with people and customers is with the help of video. That is the most engaging way to talk to anyone, to communicate any idea to anyone, right? And because of that, they are all flocking to video platforms because of which they would require someone who can tell a better story with the help of their video editing skills. And hence, there's going to be a lot more demand of skilled video editors who can deliver on time. And I'll tell you how to do that in the end of this video. So make sure that you watch till the end as well. So that's why you should be getting into video editing. The best part about video editing is that you don't need to have a degree, right? It is good to have one, but you don't necessarily need a degree if you want to work online as a video editor. You could be sitting in your room, in your house from around the world. You can be any age, 15, 16, 18, 20, or like me, 22. And if you learn the skill to edit videos and tell stories through your edit, and you can do that effectively and you can sell your skill. You can effectively earn tens of thousands of dollars as a video editor. To go even deeper, if you start working as a video editor in India, the starting salary will be about 30 to 40,000 rupees per month. And as you start leveling up, as you gain experience and have projects to back up, you can get a job for as much as 60, 80, and even one lakh rupees per month. But here is where it gets even more interesting, right? Video editors who can crack the freelance game, who can work with multiple clients in India, in US, in Europe, in other countries as well, can end up making a lot of money. I recently interviewed someone on my channel who was making over $10,000 a month selling his video editing services on Fiverr. You can check that video if you're interested, but the idea is there's a lot of potential, right? Both as someone who does not have a degree qualification and wants to get a job or someone who wants to make a lot of money like $10,000 per month, it is possible with the help of video editing, right? So that is the potential that video editing has. That is how much salary you can expect. I remember I used to charge about one to 2000 rupees for every video I used to edit for the client about three years ago. And that was insane. I just felt amazing, right? I could be sitting on my laptop in my room, on my table, just editing something, tinkering away, and I can make money through that. And that was just the best feeling ever. And gradually, I started building a team. I started outsourcing the work. I started building an agency around it called as Market Up, in which we would offer not just video editing, but content strategy, graphic design, other services as well, grouped into one single package. And we can charge a higher amount for that from every single client. So that was a story. We started market up, we scaled it. Currently I'm sitting in the office of that company itself, shooting videos for all of you people. So that's the crazy story about it. We have built it into an eight figure agency and I am just amazed by how much benefits and opportunities can video editing bring for your particular career. So that's the scope, that's the salary, that's my personal story. But honestly speaking, you're not here for that, right? You're here to understand how do you get started? And that's what I'll tell you in the next few minutes. Now, before we talk about how do you start editing, let's first talk about the different type of videos that you can edit, right? There are so many different varieties of videos you could be editing. We have a YouTube style horizontal video, and we also have a vertical reel format video. Going even 
deeper, there are various formats, right? They could be a vlog type video. They could be a talking head video like this one. They could be a video in which I require animations. They could be a video in which I want to show statistics. I want to show infographics. There could be videos in which I want to show B-rolls a lot. Now, depending on the format, the editing style can be completely different. I'll give you a quick example. So imagine someone is making a video reviewing the India versus Australia match which happened in the Cricket World Cup, right? So they could be making a video around that. Now, the visuals for that would be very much similar to that of a match, exactly, right? Versus if I'm making a vlog type video, then the visuals for that would be a lot different, right? In the Cricket World Cup video, I was showing stats, I was showing pictures of all the players, I was showing what were they doing, what are the other information. It's very information dense. But versus if you're recording a vlog, the edit over there is very simple, right? There are less text. It's more about effects. It's more about the emotion you can tell to someone, right? It's more about how can you keep them hooked and keep them watching for longer. That's the basic idea that you need to understand. Different formats, different editing styles, and different skill sets needed to execute them. Now, since a lot of you will be starting from scratch, you need to understand how to edit each of them, right? You need to have a basic understanding, but you must choose your niche. The biggest mistake video editors make is that they are just average at all the type of edits. They do not pick their forte, right? You need to pick one thing. It could be you creating documentary type videos and that's what you specialize over. That does not mean that you cannot make a vlog type video. You can, it's just that you have more inclination and speciality over editing a documentary type video on YouTube. So having that pie shape learning is very important, right? So you have a couple of video formats that you've mastered and then you have like a basic understanding on how to edit other formats of videos on YouTube, on Instagram Reels and elsewhere. So once you understand about pie shape learning and different video formats and ideas, let's now talk about getting started with video editing itself, which again is going to be very interesting. The first thing to focus on is going to be the tool, right? Not the most important, but still the thing that you'll be interacting with every single day. So a video editing tool is just something that you use to edit the video. You already know that, but the more important part is what tool do you choose, right? Now we can divide this into the device that you have. For example, if you just have a simple phone, if you're just editing a video on your phone, you could basically be using two main applications. One could be CapCut and the other one could be VN Video Editor, right? So you can use either of these I have personally tried using VN video editor app and it was very simple and you know intuitive for me to use. I could simply just import media into the project. I could then start looking at the timeline and I could then start using some overlays to put some pictures and videos and have some text around it for subtitles. And I can also add some effects, some trendy effects that are you know working very well on Instagram, it will automatically show that you can just add it and you can have a good time editing the video. But that's a mobile video editor app. It's only good if you have like a small project or if you're just you know doing something light. But if you really want to do some intense video editing, some big projects for which you'll get paid top bucks, you really need to go to the laptop, right? So again, as I said, with a phone, you can either go with CapCut or with VN Video Editor. It's great for editing reels, not so much editing long form videos for YouTube or elsewhere. So please get that in your mind whenever you are thinking what tool to choose, always understand what is your use case. It's never a good option to choose a sword to knit a cloth. And now talking about the laptop, you have a lot of different options, right? You first of all have DaVinci Resolve. It's a completely free software you can use and you can start editing videos from the get go. It's also the first tool that I personally use when I got my MacBook uh, about three years ago and I just loved the interface. It's completely free, it has different modes, it has an edit mode, it has a fusion mode, it has an export mode, it has a media importing mode. So you can basically structureize everything much better over there. So it's a, again, very simple for you to use, but that's the first tool. Second one is the most versatile, which is Premiere Pro by Adobe. And that's one tool that I don't have experience of because I went with the third tool, but this one tool is what I think most video editors should be using, right? Because of its versatility. Anyone would have that project. Anyone would be compatible to using files 
of Adobe Premiere Pro, right? So there would be no issues as such. Everyone would, would understand what you're talking about. If you communicate to another video editor or videographer, they would understand what you are saying. So that's a bit about Premiere Pro. Along with Premiere Pro, you also have something called as After Effects, which we will be touching on in the later part of the video. So keep watching for that. Uh, but After Effects is a platform where you go to basically create animations, right? And that's a bit more complex part of video editing. We'll go to that in some time, but that's another important thing. Then you have the third tool, which is going to be Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro is my favorite tool. I bought it for a one-time deal in 2021 has worked out amazingly well for me. This is what I used to edit all of my videos when I was editing videos myself on YouTube. And it was just a great experience, right? The Apple MacBook works amazingly well with the Apple Final Cut Pro application and the render times are amazing. I can just basically export any video and I can get it done in a couple of minutes. But if you're just getting started, go with DaVinci Resolve. It's completely free and simple to use. And the idea is tools don't matter as much. Honestly speaking, you don't need to have the best cooker or you don't need to have the best utensil if you want to make a good recipe, if you want to cook, a, cook good food, if you want to make good food, you don't need to have the best equipment. You need to have the best spices. You need to have the right quantity of everything. And that's how you make it amazing. You need to understand the right algorithm and then you can use it on any tool that you have. And that's very important in video editing. So you can pick whatever tool you want. It's all versatile. The ideals are the same. They might have different names for something or the other, but it all works very similarly. Now, apart from these main video editing applications, you also have AI applications you can use for video editing. Uh, one of them, which is very famous is called as Runway. So Runway ML is a free tool that you can download and you can essentially do a lot of interesting things with the help of Runway ML AI, right? For example, if you want to remove an object from your scene, from the video, you can do that. Maybe you want to add something new to it. You can do that. Maybe you want to take a particular object and make it do something, right? Or maybe you want to extend that footage and see what it will generate through AI. You can do that very easily with the help of Runway. It has a lot of different features as you can see on the screen. And along with that, you also have another tool called as Descript. Now Descript is a tool which will transcribe everything you are speaking in your video. It's very helpful for you to create captions and quickly have a look at everything that you've said throughout the video. So that's how Descript and Runway ML works. I would suggest you to try out both of these tools. You can basically download them on your Mac or Windows and you can start using it over there. So that's about the tools. Now let's talk about what are the basic things that you need to understand whenever you are editing a video, right? So I'll break it down one by one, make sure that you take notes and then start learning about them. There's a brilliant video, which is a crash course by Casey Ferris about DaVinci Resolve. Put that in the description, go check it out and start learning from there. But when you start opening a video editing software, you need to create a project. A project is basically going to be your file in which you will create the whole edit and then you will export that edit and you will get your desired MP4 file. It could be any other .mov file as well, but it's going to be your edited video that you export with that project inside your video editing application. So that's going to be your most important thing that you create a blank project. And when you create a blank project, there will be certain settings you can set. First of all, it's going to be the frames per second. Now, depending on the video that you want, you can change it. Normally for FCP, it stays at 25p, which is basically 25 frames per second. So that's very important for you to keep in mind. Other than that, there is going to be the resolution of the video. Do you want the video to be 1080p? Do you want the video to be in any other resolution? So you can pick that over there. And then you also have the exact pixels. So you can mention that I want it to be 1920 into 1080p or I want it to be 1280 into 720. You can just pick all the pixels and then you can press on create the project. And that is when you will have a simple clean project ready for you to start using. So once you have that, the next step is to import media, right? You are basically adding media to a project file. This could be any media that you want to include in your video, including your A-roll, which is the main footage. Like this is A-roll for my video. 
and it could also be B-roll, which is basically footage I've shot that I can overlay on top of my A-roll, which will make it look more cinematic and would add more context. And aside from that, it could also be other footage, like it would be other videos, it would be other photos, it could be other audio as well. So you import all of that media into your file, right? You can just go to file, you can go to import and you can import all of that media at one go. You can also import captions later on, we'll talk about that. But once you import all the media, the next step is for you to start using that media. So the way any video editing application works is that there is a timeline, right? For every project, you will have a timeline. A timeline is basically going to show you the whole reel of your video. You can see every part of your video, you can zoom in to every single frame and you can see what effects or what changes have you done to this footage. And that is going to be your timeline. You can basically drag any media file into your timeline and it will be added in the main timeline. Now timeline works on the concept of layering. You can put layers on top of each other. One layer could be one video footage. You can have a picture on top of that. You could have an audio underneath it. So you can create multiple audio layers. You can create multiple video layers as well, right? And that is essentially how it works. For example, if you want multiple icons to be popping after every half a second, so you can create multiple layers for that at every half a second, there can be a icon popping up like that. So that, that will create multiple layers for you, right? So that's the basic idea of layers and timelines. Learn how to navigate through it all. Now to navigate through the whole timeline, you'll be using a skimmer. Using that skimmer, you can go to any part of the video and you can see what was happening over there. You can press play and you can see exactly what is happening in that part of the video footage that we have in our timeline. So after timeline and navigation, the next step is going to be your cuts. So in any footage that you might see, you have to put cuts. It is possible that when the subject is speaking, they might stammer or you might want to cut the silences or you might want to just make sure that everything is crisp, right? So you can basically cut a part of the video. There are various types of cuts. There's a normal cut, which you can just cut. You can use a basic shortcut for that on your keyboard and you can have a cut in your video, right? That's a basic cut. Other than that, there's also other types of cuts. For example, there's a cut called as a jump cut in which you are basically trying to show the passage of time. So instead of you showing the whole footage in which someone is doing some action, you just show the main parts of it and you can cut the other transitionary phases of the subject doing something in the video. There's another cut called as the J cut. Now J cut is very interesting because here you can have a first video of yourself and another clip in which you can take the first few seconds of that audio and you can put it underneath the first video itself so that people are engaged. There are no dull moments. It's a very cool retention tactic that you can employ to make sure that people are hooked onto the video of your client. So that's a basic J cut. There's also something called as the L cut in which the audio of the first video continues to play in the second video as well. And that's why you have that L shape formed over there. In case of the J cut, you have that J shape. Other than that, you also have a montage cut in which you're basically showing a group of footages and they're just going after one by the other, right? Really quick, just showing what's happening around and giving the user a sense of what to expect. That is a montage cut. You might have seen that in a lot of vlog type videos in which they just show different clips quickly and that's what you call as a montage. You can play some background music onto it. You can match the changing of the clips with the beats of that video, of that audio, and that will make it look amazing. So that's a bit about cuts. Now let's go and talk about transitions. So transitions happen whenever you have two footages and you want to transition from one video to the other, simply put. So again, the best way to do that is fade in, fade out. It's a very simple transition that you can apply and it will just look very basic. Another one is called as a dissolve transition in which the first footage is dissolving 
and the second one is coming into picture and again that can show you the passage of time throughout the video when you are trying to have a storytelling factor over there another transition is the smash cut transition in which there's something very rapid happening and immediately you cut that footage and it looks like a smash another transition is the iris transition you might have seen those tom and jerry movies right at the end of every episode of tom and jerry the whole scene goes down and there's just a circle in which you can only see Tom or Jerry and that is what you call a iris transition. So you basically have that scene in which the whole scene is coming into a single circle around the face of the subject. So that's how the iris transition works. Another transition is a wipe transition. It could be wipe from up to bottom. It could be from right to left. It could be left to right. It could be in any fashion that you can see right now. And these are of various different types. So that is a simple wipe transition. You also have glitch transitions, right? So if I want to go from one thing to the other, I will always be glitching, right? So that is essentially how it works. There are other formats as well of transitions. I will not go into depth. You can just look up and you can find all the other types of transitions, but a very popular transition people are having is that in the Instagram reels. So you might've seen uh, those girls who make those reels in which they are dressed normally, and then they will just, you know, put their hand on the frame, on the lens, and then they're all, you know, dressed up, like they're going outside or going for party or something. And that is a very interesting transition called as the invisible transition, in which they are covering the lens. And in that moment, they're changing the video. Right? So as soon as they cover the lens with something black, they will then attach this clip with another clip in which they are doing the same thing, but in a same fashion. And then it looks like it is the same clip itself. So that's a simple invisible transition that you can apply whenever you're making Instagram reels. So that was cuts and transitions. Now let's talk about text. So as I said, you can overlay something on top of your main video in the timeline, right? It could be a video, it could be a picture, it could also be text. So you can essentially add text to your video and you can start editing any part of it. You can edit the font, the size, the color, the position of it, the X and Y axis. You can also, you know, tilt it. You can have it like in like a 2D rotation, 3D rotation. You can do all sorts of things with it. So one important thing to understand is the formatting of text, right? So text and fonts, they are telling an emotion, right? If I have a simple Comic Sans font, and if I have a Papyrus font, and if I have a Montserrat font, or if I have an Algerian font, all of these fonts are different. Each of these are conveying a different emotion, right? Like the Comic Sans has a very chill vibe, whereas the Montserrat has a very formal vibe to it. So you have to understand what font is usable in which case and only use it in that particular scenario. So that's about text, about font families. You can just go onto Google fonts and have a look at all the different type of fonts that are available. You can download fonts and you can load unique and custom fonts into your system as well, into your library of your video editing application. You can start using it later on. I did this for the Mr. Beast font, right? Like the one that you might see in all of his videos. I exported that, downloaded it, and then imported it into my own video editing application, which was Final Cut Pro. And that is how fonts really work. Formatting is very important because if you have a white background, if you're playing a white text on it, it will not work. There are a couple of things to understand. Number one is gonna be your drop shadow. Then you have outline. Now, when you tinker with all of these settings, you can add more depth to the text that you've written, right? And as you can see now, this text looks much better than what we had before. So knowing when to use it, understanding a bit about colors and contrast is very important. You would obviously not want to use a white text on the top of a yellow background, right? That just looks horrible. So knowing what color combination works with what is very important whenever you are editing videos. Uh, you need to have a basics of design. If you don't have that, you will not be able to make good videos. So understand a bit about that. Let's now talk about adding media. It could be pictures, it could be videos. So you can find a ton of pictures and videos that you want to add maybe as a stock footage or something online. There are platforms like Unsplash, Pexels, Pixabay, 
there is Shutterstock. There are plenty of these platforms which allow you to use these footages freely, both pictures as well as videos. So you can download it from their platform and you can start putting it into your own project itself. So once you've imported it from your downloads folder to your project, you can just drag it and you can overlay it on top of the video where you want to play it in your timeline. Right? It's very simple. You can have a simple fade in, fade out animation if you want to do that transition or you can also have any other complex transition. Now, just like with text, every media, video or picture that you add can also be edited, can also have characteristics in the software itself. So there is an option to crop, to change the position, to change the color, to change all the other characteristics that are normally there for all of these media that you overlay on top of your A-roll on your timeline itself. There are so many stock platforms where you can go to find a ton of the freely available videos and pictures like, you know, Pexels and Unsplash along with Shutterstock and Pixabay and many others. You can also start using AI tools and generate your own unique AI pictures or videos for that matter, right? A great tool to use is ideogram.ai. Uh, you can also check out Mid Journey. They recently had their V6, the sixth version of it, and it just looks amazing. Also, there's another thing that is called as Pika. So Pika is a new platform which can create amazing, rich, and detailed looking videos all by entering just one line of text. So you can have amazing B-rolls as well as stock footage with it, with just text. That is the beauty of that platform. Now that we're talking about pictures, let's also talk about icons. Whenever you start editing a video, you would obviously need to add icons, right? Icons is what will help you tell the story in a more visual way. And my favorite platform to find all of the icons is Flat Icon itself. They have over 13 million vectors and icons that you can download. And these are vectors, right? These are SVG files. So it will make sure that even if you zoom in or zoom out, the quality is not compromised. So again, icons, flat icons, and if you want to use you know, pictures or videos, then I've just told you about all the stock platforms to do that along with the AI platforms to create it with just your text. And that would be a great way for you to create all of the media to add to your videos. So, so far we have covered the basics, right? The bare minimum stuff that you need to understand if you want to create videos. But there's a lot of interesting things that you will need to also learn, right? Like this is okay, but Whenever you edit a video, you are essentially telling a story to anyone, right? And whenever you tell a story, it needs to have a very clear understanding and storyboarding in advance. So what I'm saying is whenever you start to edit a video, even before you edit, you need to put in the hard work. The hard work goes when you understand what the footage is all about, right? So you're listening what the person is speaking in the video or what is happening in the video and you're writing it down, you're making notes. Like, okay, there's a part in which I'm talking about this. Then there's a part I'm talking about this. Then you start researching that if I'm talking about a statistic, you need to find that stat and have it ready when you start editing. If I'm talking about doing something then you can download footages of me doing it or just a stock footage that shows what I'm talking about. So all of these things need to be done in advance. And there's also something called a storyboarding. Now storyboarding is a process in which you, you are not editing anything in the video, but you are creating like a visual representation of what the edit would look like. It's something a lot of editors do whenever they're creating ads and trailers and you know short form highly edited content. So they create these storyboards that help give an idea to the client for what to expect from this edit. So that's a great way for you to make sure that you're planning everything in advance, right? You've researched, you've planned, you have scripted everything and now you're moving into editing the video. And that is so much important for you to understand. Let's also talk about effects and animations. And you would have seen a lot of videos on YouTube, right? You might have seen videos of Ali Abdal. You might have seen videos of Johnny Harris. You might have seen those Vox documentaries. So they're all having different 
formats and styles. For example, the Vox documentary will always have that highlighter effect. Whenever they are looking at some statistic or some news, they will always have that highlighter effect. And that's a very common effect or style that is out there in the industry called as a simple highlighter effect. Then you might have seen Ali Abdal making videos on you know YouTube shorts or Instagram reels and the way he records it is that you know he might be speaking about something and behind him be between the background of his recording and him there's some text or there's something happening over here. All of these animations are created with the help of After Effects right. So when you are learning about Premiere Pro you can also start learning about After Effects because this will help you create those animations and let's first talk about what is an animation right. Animation is basically showing motion through keyframes right. So the basic idea the basic concept of After Effects is all about keyframes right. You will always find different frames and you can write down what you want the scene to look like at this keyframe and at the next keyframe and between this what happens is the motion. Between this what happens is what the animation is all about right. That's the basic idea of uh, you know animations and after effects. Obviously there are a lot of different things as well. If you're learning about after effects I will put a video link in the description that will help you start with it on YouTube. It's completely free but as you start learning about after effects learn the basics of keyframes right. How do keyframes really work? How does animation really work? What are the basics of ease in, ease out? How do you add motion blur to any motion that you're trying to show on the screen? There's also simple things like presets and effects on After Effects. Also learn about the graph editor. So whenever I have described motion of anything, I can alter the speed of it. It is happening on the graph editor. Right. So maybe I want it to be really quick in the start and then slow at the later stages of the animation or maybe I want it to be very slow and then really pick up momentum at the very end. So I can do all of those edits on the graph editor itself. Right. It's also called as Bezier curves. So I can edit it over there and I can see it reflect in the demo or I can see it reflect in the edit itself. And once I'm done with that, then I can save this and then it will be available as a simple file overlaying on top of your video itself in Premiere Pro. So that's how it works. Uh, let's, let me give you a quick example of the Ali Abdal style reel, right? So if you want to create that nice looking effect in which there's some text or something behind you, right? So you do something called as rotoscaping. Right, rotoscaping is a simple tool that you can go for called as roto brush tool. When you click on that, you can basically select the subject that you have in the video. Right, so you can basically use AI of After Effects and you can basically just carve out a simple outline for the subject. Right, so just go through the perimeter of the subject and it will automatically find the areas it will automatically pick the surfaces and it and it will create that area itself and then as you know in video things are moving right so my hands are moving and everything else is moving with it so it can track those movements right you don't have to particularly tell what is the subject like at every frame that will just waste too much of your time you can simply use roto brush tool to get all of that motion tracked very easily it's more of an advanced masking technique that you can use and then you can freeze it basically right and now there are two layers created one is the background layer and one is the subject layer and in between you can put your text you can put any other animation or video for that matter so that's essentially how that works this animation looks amazing Another one that you might have seen is those low frames per second type clips and text, right? So there is a way to do that inside of After Effects in which you basically have to use this preset called as posterized time. Posterized time and then random is a effect expression that you add, right? So essentially in 
After Effects, you can add expressions, which are nothing but code that will tell the software to show this footage in a certain way or to animate this footage in a certain way, right? So you're basically saying that I want to reduce the FPS of this text or of this particular footage. And you can do that with the help of posterized time. Right? You might have also seen that some footage and some icons are always, you know, uh, floating in Ali Abdal's videos. How does that happen? So that basically happens with this thing called as the wiggle expression, right? So you can just go into After Effects, you can pick that icon and you can have that wiggle, right? You can choose how much do you want it to wiggle and how fast you want it to wiggle. So that's going to basically tell the software, how do you animate it? So these are After Effects expressions, right? So I'm sure that you will find a lot of these things when you start digging deeper into it. But the basic idea is that you need to create animations with the help of After Effects. Another thing is that, you know, when you start creating these animations, you can't be applying this and doing the whole process over and over again. Right? Let's say that you have to show those wiggling floating icons five times in a video. You will not be applying it, going to After Effects, animating it, and then coming back. That is just a huge waste of time. So what you do if you want to become an efficient video editor is that you use something called as M-O-G-R-T, Motion Graphic Templates. So you basically go to Window and go to Create an Essential Graphic, and then you create all the characteristics of this graphic, right? You can change the text of this graphic, you can change the font style, the font color, and other things about it. So you can add each of those characteristics to the essential graphic, right? And it will have a label and it will have a value that you have to input. And once you program it over there, then you can just say that export it as a MOGRT, motion graphic template. And then you can keep that file with you in your system, right? It's like a one-time thing that you have to create, one-time thing that you have to animate, and after you're done with that, then you can basically just, just you know, export it into your Premium Pro project without having to go to After Effects and you can quickly start editing any video and get that exact same animation look. So that's a basic idea of how motion graphic templates work and how After Effects work. It's all about creating those compositions and then using that into Premiere Pro. So that's a bit about animation. I hope you got the basic idea. Again, description will have links to free resources and courses and tricks that you can employ and become a better animator. Again, there's another concept called as rigging in animation that you will learn later on. If you want a particular part of an image that you have on the screen to do something, Maybe, you know, you have like a picture of some person and you want them to wave like this. Then you have to create those joints throughout the whole part of the photo, right? So th this is one joint, this is one joint, this is one joint, this is one joint. So you create those joints and then you start to do rigging for that, an for that particular animation. And then you can make it move like this, right? So that is how it works. There's also another element in which you might have seen videos and pictures start moving, right? They just keep moving. That's another thing called as turbulent displays, right? It's a part of the After Effects presets that you will find. You can just drag and drop it over there and you can start having some fun with it as well. So this way, there are many use cases. It depends on what you want to build and then you can have the look and feel that you are looking for. Again, it's all about leveling up yourself, right? If you do not level up as a video editor, my friend, you will find a hard time getting clients. There are so many editors who just learn one style and they just stick to it forever. They are not upgrading. They're not seeing what's happening in the market. They're not looking at the trends. And because of that, they end up falling behind. So make sure that you learn about everything. Make sure that you watch YouTube regularly and you are carefully observing for unique editing styles. You are seeing how did this person edit this video? What is the storytelling going on over here, right? And that will give you a lot of perspective about how can you edit your own footages and your client work better. So start upgrading yourself. 
one big thing that a lot of video editors lack is sound design skills right they are good at cutting videos trimming videos and other things but they just don't really know how do you add effective sound design and sound design can just make or break the whole project right there's a whole vibe to a video there's a level of tension or playfulness that you can add if you just have the right soundtracks right so let's try to break this down a little, little bit you have sound effects over there and then you have ambience soundtracks right and then you have something called as the score right so these things are very important the score is basically what governs the vibe right like if you see any you know chase or murder mystery movie they will all have a very mysterious background music right and the tone of the video can completely change if you change the score the main music the main soundtrack also something called as ambience or ambience it's basically the normal sounds whenever someone is in a particular place like if you are in nature right and you're recording a nature documentary of course you're going to hear sounds of animals of course you're going to hear water droplets coming down on leaves like these nature sounds which you might not be able to capture through your you know mic or the video footage that you have so you add it in the post production you add those audio when you are in there if you're in a cityscape of course you're going to hear the sound of the traffic of course you're going to hear a ton of those noises the honking sounds so these are the things that you add afterwards when you're editing the footage to make the footage come alive right i hope i'm making some sense this one skill is so underrated and i think that if you can just master sound design right so much of creating great videos can be solved by just this creating better sound ambience and score along with that you also have sudden noises that you can add which are called as sound effects right you can have a simple whoosh you can have a simple pop there can be a door shut sound depending on what is happening in the video you would put different type of sounds you can they can be a clicking sound they can be a simple typing sound over there right if someone is you know writing something with their pen there can be that sound of the ink and the nib of the pen touching the paper so you have to be that careful you have to observe everything and then use that audio in the right places and that is going to make all the difference acha along with this in sound design you also have sound correction you can do that by altering the eq of the audio the equalizer you have different type of things like high pass filter there's a low pass filter depending on how do you want the audio to sound like do you want it to feel more nostalgic do you want it to feel different right so you can have different templates and effects that you can apply to your audio itself also you can also alter the treble the bass the pitch of your video and your audio and when you do that the results will be very different right so learn about these things as much as possible it's going to help you create better you know sound profiles for any video that you're editing i hope that makes sense let's also quickly talk about color correction and grading right it's a very important thing which you will learn when you start going into the advanced phases of editing videos right so color grading is a very complex topic do not touch it if you've not mastered the previous topic that i just talked about but if you start talking about color grading right there's something called as luts lookup tables now these are settings or filters that you can apply to your own video to give it a particular vibe and right? again let me break it down color correction and color grading are two separate things let me not mix both of them for example there are cameras who will record a very you know 2d flat type video with very bad colors like very pale and you know just 2d colors they will look very cold essentially that right? there is no life in it and then you use color correction to make the footage look like normal like right now right so that is what color correction is all about when you take that raw s log file and you make it look normal like it was in the room that is color correction color grading on the other hand is when you want the footage to have a certain vibe if you want it to 
convey a warm emotion so you show the warm colors you want to show something happy is happening right something good is happening in the video or if there's some bad news so you want to show like a cold vibe to everything right so everything will be more bluish tones so that is how you can convey emotion of the video without even speaking anything and they will know that something wrong is happening right or if you want to give like a very dark dystopian vibe so you will have like a dark uh, lut for it so again luts is something that you can get from online and you can make your own lut as well and that will just make sure that at the end of the edit right once you've edited the whole video you can just sip quickly drop a lut and you can get that desired color grading that you want right and that is how it's going to work again i will not go into depth of color grading because it's a completely different topic much more complex to cover in this basic guide but check out the link in the description to learn more about this so those were the basics plus the advanced concepts plus sound design plus some important tips for how to save time and we also talked about color grading oh my god we just covered a lot of content but you know that's just half of it being a video editor is so much more than just learning about the tool or learning about the effects or learning about the expressions it's a lot more about being a storyteller right and that's the skill that i think most video editors are lacking today right they they, they learn all the tricks and tips but they just don't focus on learning storytelling right at the end of the day any edit that you create is just a story you're telling to someone and whenever you tell a story it's most important to convey an emotion right you're talking to someone you are basically showing a video to convey an expression or emotion at the end so your footage should convey that any story should have a basic setup should have the hero or the main person go through a conflict then there should be a resolution after a climax and then there should be a learning that's the basic story format that you can find in any story movies or elsewhere but you have to really take this into account if you are creating this for social media this changes a bit because you have a hook at the start you have a hook that creates interest and attention and afterwards you create that whole format right of creating the basic set line of introducing the hero having a basic conflict going through failures and making the hero learn something new and then hero goes through a climax and defeats the villain and something happens so this is a basic storytelling hook that you create for any story that you have now that we're talking about mo grts motion graphic templates you should also know that you can download a ton of these templates right you don't need to make it from scratch you can basically go to a ton of free websites i have went to mixkit i have went to motion array i have also went to envato i bought the subscription of envato and through that i got access to hundreds and thousands of these templates both for davinci resolve or adobe premiere pro after effects along with my fcp uh, projects so i will find templates for all of these and i can just start using them i will download it i will put it in the right folder and then it will be available to me in my software itself right and you know these are basically template packs so they have a lot of stuff inside of them just to give you a basic example you can have very cool looking backgrounds as you can see on the screen you can have amazing looking animated titles you can have amazing lower thirds which is basically text that is visible at the bottom third of the video itself you can have amazing call outs you can have great stomp animations you can have great shapes you can have great social media animations so all of these things are made already by someone you can simply just drag and drop it into your project and start using it into your timeline itself and that to me is amazing because you don't need to waste more time you know just creating everything from scratch so i have used it a lot of times if you want to get it check out mixkit or motion array or envato and you can also you know i used to do this a lot i just used to go to telegram and just search you know final cut pro templates 
and I would find them, I would download them, I would start using them. And that worked just fine for me. So if you're getting started, maybe that is something you want to explore, but again, it's illegal. So it's up to you. So that's how it works. Basically, this is a platform you can use to get all of these templates and edit faster for your client. Your end goal should be how can I deliver the best quality in the least amount of time possible so that I can surprise my client, over deliver and then start charging more later on once they are, you know, once they love my service. So that's what you need to focus on all the time. So this is basics of what do you learn as a video editor. Now let's talk about how do you find opportunities as a video editor, right? Another thing to understand is I run a marketing agency in which I hire video editors all the time. So if you want to work in my agency, check out the details in the description or just send me an email to this email right here and I would love to work with you. And that is going to be very important. Number two, you can also check out ytjobs.co. Now ytjobs.co is a platform wherein a lot of top YouTubers are putting in job descriptions. They are looking to hire remote video editors. And if you know how it works, you can apply and you can get an opportunity and you can get paid in tens of thousands of dollars from your home. That is amazing. You can obviously create your gigs on Fiverr and start bidding on Upwork and find opportunities through that way. But the only issue with that is you can only charge as much as the other people. And the moment you charge more, the client will go to the next video editor who is ready to you know, edit it for less price. So you are like a commodity over there. And the best way to escape it is to position yourself as an expert in this field to edit this kind of quality and then get referrals. So once you start working with a couple of clients, they will start talking about you to other people. And that way you can get referrals. And that I think is the best way to get clients as a video editor. So always focus on this very important element if you want to you know, find opportunities. Referrals works amazingly well. That's how your you know, video editing business will flourish with the help of referrals. And at the end, you can always try reaching out to your favorite creator or company with a cold outreach. You can have a very basic email and you can start reaching out to them. The way to reach out to get replies is to create an edit for them already and then just email it to them saying that, hey, I had a look at five videos of yours. I think five things can be changed. I edited one of your videos and showed it to you. Let me know what you think about it. And you won't believe how many people are interested when you show interest, when you show effort, when you come up with something interesting to put out there and they would love to get on a call with you. Your whole focus with the cold outreach is to get on a call with them, sit with them and explain why you are the best for them and offer them a monthly retainer service in which you will be editing their videos every single month at a discounted rate than you normally charge for per project basis and you can do that forever for them. Your goal as a video editor is to find long-term projects to work on so that the money keeps rolling in and you have stable projects to work on. So that is how it works. That is the basics of, you know, getting clients. It's a lot of hard work, but they will all be looking at one very important thing. And that is your proof of work that will come from your portfolio. Now you can use platforms like, you know, Google drive, you can use dribble, you can use Behance, you can use Vimeo to create your basic profile. The way this will work is on these platforms, you would showcase your best work. Just show me three to four of the best edits that you've done in the last six months. Show it to me and make it the most up to date as possible. People say that, you know, this is, these videos are from one year before now I'm better. I don't care. I don't know that you are better. Show me that you are better and have the most up to date profile on all of these portfolio platforms. Always have that portfolio link on your LinkedIn, on your Twitter and have a personal branding done. I've made a separate video on personal branding. Go check it if you have not already, but that is very important to understand. Also, I've made a video talking about how do you start freelancing, right? So go watch that That's a separate discussion. But once you learn video editing, knowing how to freelance effectively is very important. And that video will teach you how to do that. I have tried recruiting hundreds of video editors. And I think that the biggest problem that all of the editors face are their portfolios. They all have a very boring portfolio. 
which gets me all confused. Are they skilled? Are they not skilled? Will they really edit the kind of videos that I want them to edit? Can they really deliver on time? I am just confused as a client. If I want to work or not, I don't know, right? So I, I am confused and there's just so much noise out there. People trying to copy each other, people just following one path blindly, people not learning new things and new paradigms. So I think that's the biggest thing you need to understand. If you want to stand out, you need to have an amazing portfolio and a great video, right? Let me play this video and have a look at this and tell me, wouldn't you want to work with this editor for your next project, right? So I hope that I'm making some sense. Always put in the time to be discoverable, have that portfolio, but more than that, look professional. Your framing should be like that, that I'm a professional video editor. Like that should be displayed by the way you show your portfolio, by the way you've made your website, which by the way, a lot of people do not have as a video editor. You must have your own website, which is your name dot com or dot in, and that will help you build your brand, look more professional, work more professional. When you have that email of, you know, at the dishansharma.com, that just adds more professionalism to your way of working. How much do you charge? That's a very common question people ask, right? In India, you can start with getting paid about 1000, 2000 rupees for editing a 10 to 15 minute type video. That is just the starting. You can also edit reels for about 300, 400 rupees for every reel uh, with, with basic things, right? Which would have some stock footage. It would have the captions, subtitles, and it would have a CTA, it would have like some follow wala icon and that is going to be the basic reel. There are people who are making Ali Abdal type reels for their clients and charging 1000, 1500 rupees to them. And obviously there are people who are using After Effects animations into their edits and they are charging as high as 7000 rupees for every 10 minutes that they are editing. And that just tells you the opportunity that there is out there to make a lot of money as a video editor. And it is all about being efficient. It's all about finding the right client who can pay you that much money, right? Many of the video editors give up because they tried a couple of times, they tried pitching themselves, they tried finding opportunities and clients, but they just don't end up finding any because they are not looking at the right place. They are trying to sell themselves in a fish market where everything is commoditized. People don't pay more for better quality of edits and they just end up being in the same rat race. What they need to do is to get out of this region, right? Look out for foreign clients. They pay a lot more than Indian clients. And that will be your golden ticket to independence and making a lot of money from your home itself. So that's a basic idea of what you need to do to become a great video editor in 2024. But also you need to learn about agreements. You need to learn about invoicing. You need to learn about contracts. You need to learn about how do you get a client on a retainer basis. Learn how to get testimonials from clients. Also learn how to do case studies, right? Whenever you create videos and you see that that video performed very well for the client, don't just move on to the next project. Actually take that result, that analytic and make a case study about it on Twitter on LinkedIn, on other platforms and talk about how your edit helped get that client more engagement, help that client get better views and make more money, right? When you do that, that tells that you are interested, that you are in serious business, that you want to grow, that you want to develop yourself as a video editor and you want to, you know, get more clients who are serious of working with the best players out there. Another mistake people make as a video editor is that they are not communicative. Right? They don't like taking feedbacks. Understand one thing, your client is not a video editor. Your client is someone who's short on time, hence paying you the money and want a great result. So you need to be as communicative as possible. Make screen recording and show what you are doing at every stage of the edit to them and ask them, is this what you want the edit to be? Ask as many questions as possible. Never assume anything. Ask, ask, ask. And that will help you make the best edit for them. There are so many editors who just edit the whole thing, show it to them, and they're like, we never wanted this in the first place. And there's just a 
you know, bad blood now between you and them because you invested five days of your time and they're like, we don't need this. So be more communicative and make sure that you express how you're editing something. You talk to them as much as possible, get on meets with them, show them your process of making these videos and what can you expect at the end of the edit. And that will help you be more responsive to them and also they will feel that they are being heard, right? Every client feels like my voice and what I want the edit to be is not heard by the editor, right? And hence I'm not getting the desired result at the very end. And that will never happen if you communicate well with your client. So these are just some things I thought of talking about in this video. I hope this video helps. Make sure that you hit the like button and click a screenshot right here and post it on social media and talk about the one thing that you learned from this entire video. Abhi raat ke do baj rahe and maybe record kar raho. Baut dir se record kar raho hai video. As you can see, if you just find something valuable from this, please share it on social media and tag me and help other people start with their journey of video editing. I hope that you start and become a highly paid video editor in 2024. If you want to work with me in my company or for my videos, reach out to me on this email and in the description. Again, description has a ton of resources, videos, courses, uh, tips and tricks to focus on if you want to become an efficient and highly paid video editor in 2024. Thank you for watching this video. If you're still watching, I write in the comment section, I was till the very end. If you have any questions about whatever I've just talked about, let me know in the comment section as well. I would love to answer to each of those questions. Thank you. I will see you all in the next video and Excelsior. Bye.